Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you a new game that I've started playing. This game is called Vulcan. It's not too famous yet, so I don't know if you've heard of it. Vulcan is an open world action RPG set in a corrupted world falling apart. And this game is a hack and slash and it runs on CryEngine technology. And the easiest way to describe this is just to show you. I could describe it as a mix between Diablo 3 and Path of Exile, kind of. Also you can see that they have drawn a lot of inspiration from Diablo 2, which I am a huge fan of so that really struck home with me I'm just gonna say that if you're a hack and slash fan and if you liked Diablo 2 then I think you should give this game a try it was really good the game right now is an alpha stage and I played it through up to level 20 which is the max level right now also you get to defeat a boss which is the end stage of this story in the alpha and then of course you can recreate characters and try it again and do other builds and stuff like that and right now the alpha is in single player mode it will go into multiplayer as the game develops but me and a friend decided to buy this and try it out because we're both fans of Hack and Slash. So let's set this up and get into the game guys so I can show you some stuff. So here guys, you can see my character that has reached level 20. And it has a bunch of golden gear because that's just how the gear at that level looks if you buy it from a vendor. And this guy that I created I made as a kind of a hunter type character. Hunter or thief. Ish. I'm gonna go in and just show you how this looks at max level at the moment. Of course the level cap is gonna be much higher than this and the gear cap as well. I would suggest that you don't see it as a done game that you want to play but more as an investment and if this is something you're interested in and you buy it now at early access then you'll both support the game developers and the game as well as getting the game cheaper and get to grow with the game and be part of the development. I think it's really fun to buy games when they're in the early access stage because if you see potential you have high hopes in something and then you'll see where it goes. I actually did the same thing with Rust when it was in early stage and I've been playing Rust ever since. Rust has turned into a great game and has grown so much. I mean you could vastly see the difference from the first days of Rust into where it is now so that's the kind of journey you can take with the game and that's really fun for me. So you see here we get into the game and we're in the, the town where you start. Just as any other hack and slash you get a bunch of abilities down here. Arrow Rain, regular attack, Frost Nova, a bunch of other stuff. You have a health bar and the other two bars up here are Umbra, which is kind of mana or spell um, spell energy that you use to cast certain spells. And the other one is Rage, which at the moment is empty. But when you use other attacks that spends Umbra or does damage and stuff like that, then you'll generate Rage. So some attacks take Umbra and some attacks take Rage. It's kind of having two pools of mana and I, I like the concept, it's cool. So you build back and forth with these used abilities accordingly to that. When you're done with the alpha, then you can get to play bounties. So I'm just gonna start a bounty here so you can see me shooting at some characters. As I said, I'm a hunter type character. So this is what I do. So at the moment it feel like I feel like my character is very very powerful and one shots most things. There's an ability called Fire Rain, then I have something called Arrow Rain, which is you can use on the list like this. Rain the arrows of lightning at the moment. Tremor. I also have the Frost Nova ability, which freezes close enemies like this. And as I do damage to these characters now, you see that I gain rage, which makes me able to do arrow rain like this. And at this point of the game, you can see that this character is quite powerful compared to the mobs it's facing. So that's just a taste of the game at the max level. I'll show you the ability tree, which you get tomes that you learn abilities from, uh, and then those abilities gain experience as you use them. And you have a bar from one to six and the left and right click here. So the abilities has to have to be used on this bar for them to gain experience. So I haven't leveled all of these, uh, but I have leveled the, those that are most useful for me as a ranged character or a 
hunter type character. You can see that I have put into increased radius or aerial effect of the arrow rain and also the damage output. And you get to choose between two different things on every level here. So here's all the abilities that I have at the moment. All assuming that you'll get more spells as the game grows and the higher level you get the more tomes you'll be able to get so you learn more spells and, and stuff like that. Then there's these secondary spells down here that you get from being a certain class or spec. Something that's quite interesting with Vulcan that I found really cool is the talent trees. The talent trees aren't fully developed yet you can see there's a lot of blank spaces out here they will be filled in in the future you see one of them one of the outer layers here is filled but they will keep growing outwards. I'll get into the skill tree a little bit deeper when I make a new character later. As you can see here I have fully specced into a hunter tree and went on to trickster and I've been filling in most talents here. I'll show you more of that later. Like a lot of hack and slash games you also have a stat tree and this is where they keep ferocity, toughness, agility and willpower. You could easily compare this to like intellect, agility, strength and, uh, and stamina. It's very similar to that. But you can see that toughness for example that you would resemble to stamina. It holds health, stamina re regeneration and stamina is something that you can use to roll and dodge attacks. And it regenerates over time. So you can roll five times, or four times as a standard, but one extra time as my class. And then they start regenerating, so you can do it again. So toughness is stamina, health, stamina regeneration, defense generation, and damage resistance, which soothingly goes under toughness. My class gains mostly from agility, so that's why I have the most of my points spent on that. You also have a potion system which is also very similar to other hack and slash games. Here's my gear and my inventory. You can see I have mostly yellow gear here and I use a crossbow. This is gear that you get to buy when you get to level 20. So it's a little bit overpowered at the moment. As you would expect, you have a little chest as well. Uh, I've actually managed to find one legendary item, which is low level though. Uh, but during my time playing this, I played with this for about 10 hours. I found one legendary low level item. And I also found one unique, and I don't know which one of these is supposed to be the most more rare one. I guess we'll see. And I've only found one of each of these, so the rarity is quite high. I'm gonna show you the creation of a new character, and I'll explain a little bit more from the start what you do in this game. So we'll go into characters and create, so we'll do a new character. And at the moment this is the character selections you have. Male, female, and you start with a body, and you decide the skin color of the person. Then you decide how muscular he's gonna be, fat, puny or thin. Make him whatever shape you want. Then you go on to the face and you can decide the haircut of the character. So these are the different cuts. You can decide the hair color. Let's do something a little bit special. That green tone is nice. You can pick different colors in the eyes. So, for example, you could do one red glowing eye. And you could do one white glowing eye. Making this character look a little bit crazy. But I think crazy is a good look if you're going to fight demons. Then there's a beard. You can decide what kind of beard you want, if you want any at all. Let's do like a little bit viking beard. And let's do that... Uh, same color as the hair, otherwise it would be a little bit weird, right? Character name. You know we're gonna name him Dingle Dong. That's a good name for a character. What do you think? Comment below what you think of this Dingle Dong character. Do you think he looks like someone you wanna play? He's ready to go. And you get a little stick to start with, which isn't too much to fight demons with, I'd say. This game is on Steam, and if you feel like trying it out, you should go check it out. And if you want to read more about it, then you can just look it up on Steam. Also, I'm not sponsored by this game by any means, but I am a big Diablo 2 fan, and when games like this come out, I just get kind of excited. And I want to test them out to see if they're all that I hope for. But here's my character, and here's the role that I talked about. There's some tutorial messages, I don't have to see them because I've already seen them. But maybe if you're new, it's helpful. In the beginning you get to a little tome, 
where you can pick either Fireball or Lightning Strike. And both of the other times I've created characters, I've gone with Lightning Strike, which seems to be a really strong ability. But we'll go with Fireball this time, just for the variation of things. So when you get this tome, you right click it, and then you get the skill unlocked Fireball. And I got it on my number one right here. Here you can see that it has zero experience compared to the previous like level 2 I had of, of uh, a lot of spells and you just gotta level it up to get to those points here it tells you to use your dodge to roll through like obstacles and damage like this actually took a little bit of damage there but whatever <laughs> you also have a passive charge ability that can go off at once every like 5 seconds or something so if I left click this to hit it, it will charge to that minion, which makes things go a little bit faster. I, I like that addition. It also has like a, it has a little bit of cooldown so you can't just spam it back and forth, that would be a little bit too overpowered I say, but I think it's nice to have it at the start. And you have little hit combos here that you can see that like maybe the third hit or whatever hits a little bit harder. I also have the rage dump from the start called brutal strike so if when you get too much rage from just hitting a minion you can just dump it with a right click and it hits like a slam ability to the ground. Of course we want to try out a fireball here so let's just throw it on something. You can see the, the spells are looking amazingly good. Look at all this explosion and the spread and the fireball itself it looks really really crisp I in my opinion I think it looks better than both Path of Exile and Diablo 3 in its just the way it looks I think it looks really really nice and also the environment and the, the physics and everything just feels really really good in this game and that's part of the reason that I like it so much that it looks a little bit more like Di Diablo 2, but a more developed version. You can see like the grass, when I shoot a fireball here, you can see the grass just flowing. I think this like the sense of physics and the, they, they just hit this spot on. And I know it's still in early access, but I really like how it looks so far. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to look even better uh, as the game goes along. So you find chests lying around, which you can find both gold and gear in. I'm usually the type of character that goes exploring the whole map before I move on to the next zone. Just because I like to be a little bit higher level than the zone usually in most games, I think that's pretty useful. Here we found a shield. We'll equip that. Look at us. We look pretty savage, don't we? What I want to do here guys is get to level 2 so I can show you how you start building your character. As you can see here the quest tells me to find my way to the exit and there has a little, there's a little glowing spot here that I'm advised to go to. So the first thing you get to encounter is a little mini boss of sorts. Now he's trying to dodge these attacks because they actually hurt quite a bit. But it doesn't have that much HP so you can just hit him down. That gets us to move on with the quest. And we have unlocked a portal. From that we got our first level. And now that what I wanted to show you guys the skill tree here. That when you start a new character you're completely blank. Everyone is the same. You don't you don't pick a class in this game. But when you are level one, then you get to decide which path you want to go to, which is kind of the same as picking a class. The five first steps you get is thief, hunter, legionary, arcanist, or guardian. You can compare it to other classes in other games. What I've been playing before is the legionary that later moved on to the next tree and became a gladiator and the next time I play the hunter that went into the trickster so this time I'm gonna pick thief I put my first point there and then I move on 
the talent tree. You get three points every level and then you get to confirm them. And that's the start of my path. So I find it quite interesting that every character is just a blank slate from the start and then you get to build him to be what you want him to be. The customization is very big. This is where is a middle ground between Diablo 3 and Path of Exile in freedom of what to do with your character and how complicated it is. I find that this level is kind of appropriate in complexity. The other thing you get when you level is the stats that I told you about before. Since I'm weak in ferocity, toughness and willpower, I'm just gonna fill them in so I get average at least. Okay, so we expect our first level and they want us to go to town. And when we get to town, I'm gonna show you something else that's really cool with the talent system. Again, when you see this overlooks, I think this game looks really, really good. For hack and slash, I think it looks really nice and um, it feels very fluent and nice to play. What's interesting though, is that let's say you fill out all of these first pie, we call this a pie, first pie talent until you get to this point. After this one, you can move on to the next tree. And you see these trees also have a class name, kind of, just as the first ones that we picked from the start. These ones are named Maleficent, Gladiator, Trickster, Elementalist, Warden. They haven't developed the trees any further than this, but I'm sure they're gonna keep doing the same thing. Which means that you can kind of do hybrid classes. And this is something that I find really interesting. I'm sorry guys, I lost the cam for a quite a while there I'm sure. We're back now. So this allows you to do hybrid classes. Hopefully hybrid classes will also be powerful. That's what I hope because playing a elementalist warrior that just seems very cool to me. Instead of going all out like barbarian mode if you if you compare it to Diablo 3. What you do here is you pick the layer that you want to rotate. Let's say I want to play an elementalist thief. So then I'll rotate this around until it gets to the right talent tree I want to move, keep moving into. So now it's on the elementalist. Then I'll just confirm that. When I get here eventually, I'll just be able to keep on moving as a elementalist thief. The sense of freedom in this game is, is really, really nice and uh, at the same time it's not too much. I feel that it's at an appropriate level. So this is something I'm really excited about. This, this talent system seems really, really cool. But that's kind of where the game is at the moment. And you saw how my full level character worked. There's not really much more to experience than when you actually get to that level. As I said, I played this game for 10 hours and I feel like I'm caught up with the game, how it works. Uh, I, fo I got the full feel of it. So. Now I'll just be waiting for more patches to roll out. I'm very happy with the experience so far and I'm definitely going to keep on playing. I'm just hoping it will be the next Diablo 2 for me. I guess you can never reach that certain point because there's so much nostalgia and stuff involved with that game. But I hope this will be a good game for me. So if you want to try it out, then look it up on Steam. Comment below if you tried it or if you find this interesting. Also, if you like these kind of videos, I would gladly try playing new games and showing them like this for you and i don't know which i don't know which format you like best either that i play it a bit and that i can explain a little bit about the game or that i go into it fresh and don't know anything and then try to record a video as i go along this of course would be a longer process because then i would have to record bits and pieces along these 10 hours that I've played and cut them together. But tell me what you think, which way would you find it most interesting to watch? Also if you like these kinds of videos please comment that below and then I'll know in the future that I can keep doing stuff like this. You can also suggest games and upcoming games for me that you want me to play and it might be something that I get into. So I hope you enjoyed today's video guys and as always I hope you had a sunny fucking day.